Welcome to the second series of podcasts focusing on innovative design trials from the Health Research Authority, the NIHR CRN Coordinating Centre, and in this series, the NIHR Office for Clinical Research Infrastructure. This time, we will be discussing some of the key learning points from the COVID-19 pandemic, and we will be building on the further questions around the management and delivery of complex, innovative design trials during the pandemic. My name is Alan Gaw, and it's a pleasure to have you with us. I'm joined today by Thomas Yaki, who is Professor in Statistics at Lancaster University, where he directs the Medical and Pharmaceutical Statistics Research Unit, which offers advice on design and analysis of preclinical and clinical studies, and develops novel statistical methods in these areas. He is also Programme Leader at the MRC Biostatistics Unit at the University of Cambridge. Professor Yaki is also involved in the Agile Initiative and the Recovery Trial, both innovative new COVID-19 drug testing platforms. Professor Yaki, thank you very much for speaking with me today. Thanks for having me. I mentioned in my introduction uh, your involvement in the recovery trial and the Agile platform. In addition, other platform trials such as Define are currently ongoing. Can you begin by explaining what the advantage of a platform approach to evaluating treatment is? Usually in a clinical trial, you evaluate one treatment at a time. And so you set up all the infrastructure to find out whether or not a particular treatment is potentially beneficial. In a platform study, you set up the infrastructure so that multiple evaluation can take place at the same time. And so the advantage of having a platform approach is that all the infrastructure is set in place once and lots of different questions can then be answered within that one platform, within that one uh, set of sort of setting up of the study. Um, There are a number of such initiatives underway to identify potential treatments for COVID-19. And I mentioned your involvement in Agile. And I wonder if you could tell us what's different about that one. Yes, so Agile is particularly um, interesting from my point of view because it's focusing on early development. And so the many of the platforms um, that are running and many of the investigations in COVID at the moment are investigating treatments that have already some established uh, track record of some sort, usually treatments that are used in a different indication. With Agile, we are looking into getting new treatments um, to patients. We're evaluating initially the safety and trying to identify what the right dose of a novel treatment is. And then at the same time, we are going to investigate whether there is sufficient signal, sufficient hope, if you want, that this particular treatment might provide benefit to the patients as well. This is also helpful because typically the two phases, finding what the right dose is and getting a a signal, if you want, for um, the benefit of the treatment are done in separate studies. Within the Agile platform, we've combined these two, making the trial design more efficient because we can learn across the different stages. We can use information that we've obtained during the uh, dose selection phase in the assessment of the um, potential for benefit of the treatment as well. In addition to that, uh, we're using a Bayesian framework for that uh, trial design, which basically means that we incorporate as much information as we possibly can in the decision making, um, whether or not a potential treatment is going to be beneficial. I think we've partly answered this already, but are there any other advantages to that particular methodological approach? Um, as I said, the, the the chief or one of the chief advantages is that you can sort of use information across the different um, sort of stages of the development. The other uh, benefit is that we're talking on a scale of we evaluating treatments on a scale that often is found to be easier to interpret, easier to understand to non-statisticians 
people not necessarily familiar with the mathematics behind it, because we're talking about probabilities of a treatment being effective at the end of the day. And so it's, it's very easy to communicate that, you know, our trial has found that there's a 50% chance that the treatment is better than standard of care, or we found that there's a 95% chance that the treatment is better than control, which is very easy to, to get across to non-statisticians. I understand that a platform trial like Agile is obviously very much an intellectual collaboration between different people and different institutions. Is it also collaboratively funded? Um, yes, so absolutely. It's obviously an intellectual collaboration. And on top of that, it's collaboratively funded. So the platform receives funding from government as well as charities, as well as industry. And then on top of that, um, makes heavy use. And I, I, I would even go as far and say it wouldn't be possible to run in the way that it is without um, sort of using the NHR infrastructure in the, in the platform. We're obviously living in a particularly difficult time just now with the pandemic very much actively seeking treatments and preventions for this disease. And I wondered what your and your colleagues' hopes are for the for the Agile platform trial. Um, yes, yeah, so I think you can you can think about well, at least for, for us, there are sort of two main uh hopes. I mean, on the one hand, there are hopes for identifying potential treatments for are helping patients with COVID. Um, and at the same time, and equally valuable, is finding out quickly that a potential treatment isn't going to be that helpful for patients. So there's clearly hope around that Agile will help identify helpful treatments um, over the course of the, of the coming month and, and possibly year. The other hope is that the framework of the Agile study um, leads to a change more broadly in how clinical trials in other areas as well is going to be undertaken in the future. Before the pandemic, setting up a clinical trials often took a year, 18 months from conception of the idea until first patient actually being treated. That process, in my opinion, is just unacceptable slow. And with Agile and recovery, we've been able to show that this process can be sped up substantially. Therefore, we're hoping that the learnings from Agile is going to lead to a much, much better, much, much faster uh, setting up of studies, a much more efficient way to under undertake treatment development in the future by, on the one hand, taking away all the barriers that currently are in place traditionally, but also by allowing and by using more efficient methodology in order to find the answers once the study is uh, running more quickly than previously. Yes, certainly the current pandemic has, has forced us to reevaluate perhaps how we uh, approve studies and how we run studies. So, Thank you very much, Professor Yaki, for sharing your thoughts with us today. Thank you for having me. Thank you for listening. We would very much welcome your feedback on these podcasts, and I hope you will join us again next time.